Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac and today's show is all about Brian. He sent in this video and it's a tour of his system. And I gotta say, this guy, Brian, is very much an audiophile. He is one of us. And anyway, so he's into vinyl, he's into tubes, he's into horn speakers. As a matter of fact, he's modded his horn speakers and he's even designing from scratch his own speakers right now. He's modded his electronics. Uh, he's been around, he's, he's, he's deep, deep, deep into this. Like, there's pictures of him as a child, like playing with his father's stereo. I mean, he's living it, he truly is. He lives in Dubai, uh, and he's promising he's gonna send future videos uh, of him with his, his pals there. So that could be really interesting. But right now, it's all about Brian and his system. So let's get to it. Hi everyone, my name is Brian. I am not the audiophiliac. Steve, the actual audiophiliac, asked me ages ago now to do a video about what it's like being an audiophile in Dubai and seeing him I'm in Dubai I thought uh, I'll be pretty well placed to to put that together so sorry it's taken so long but yeah I think I mean Steve wanted me to talk about what it's like being an audiophile here you know my, my setup and the the journey and everything so far I think it's the same you know for everyone um, well very similar for everyone at least you know mine was was more about you know I grew up with music my dad had a killer hi-fi system which he still has now and um, you know you, you grow up and you, you think you know what you whatever you're exposed to is basically normal right so I was always exposed to good sound whether it was real instruments you know a lot of classical stuff a lot of opera um, I was in a band for a short time so you know I get what kind of like the live sound sounds like and of course you know growing up it's all about going to you know, as many live concerts as possible. So, you know, I guess like everyone, you, you kind of get exposed to, to what it sounds like. And as soon as I left home, you know, the first thing I really wanted to get was a good hi-fi. But of course you leave home, get into the real world, realize you have absolutely zero money. And, you know, even a, a few hundred pounds in London was a, was a stretch to get anything. So you, you put it on the side and kind of forget about it. And, but it's always there. You know, I, uh, I, I got a turntable, I saw, oh, there's a turntable available like in a, like a Virgin Megastore over here. And I was like, oh, well, I guess they're selling turntables again. So, you know, I bought one. I had some like a uh, near field monitor uh, production speakers, kind of like active things. And I plugged it in and had a phono stage built in and uh, it sounded really good. And I, I bought a couple of records. My dad gave me his old records and um, I was immediately hooked. I mean, it was not the first time I'd heard a soundstage, but it was like, you know, there's this tiny little soundstage in between these speakers. If you're sitting in this tiny little triangle, you could hear all these different parts of the orchestra in all the right places where they should be, like the strings there and, you know, the horns, wherever. And I was, I was blown away, so obviously I was hooked. So then from then, you know, uh, the addiction begins. And, you know, I did some research and I got a, you know, Marantz integrated solid state amp. I got some monitor audio speakers. I got them, you know, really far apart. And it, 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 it honestly, it didn't really do much for me. Um, you know, this big sound stage and everything was kind of like elusive. I kept hearing about, uh, it sounded pretty good, but it was just like, you know, a, a, you know, a good kind of basic hi-fi. And um, so then you start trying to find out how you're going to make it better. So first thing I did was I bypassed the, the phono stage and the, the turntable. I think it was a project, uh, you know, the entry level essential, essential two or something. I bypassed that and used the phono stage in the, um, in the Marantz and it sounded much better. And then I was like, okay. So I, then I bought a, a turntable, which is the one I still got now. It's a clear audio. I tried to get an MM one, but they were out of stock. So I got an MC and I managed to get a free MC step up transformer, uh, a step up stage is a, a Graham Slee, can't remember the model number, that was absolutely fantastic. Then of course, you know, then, uh, you know, I moved on to, uh, I really want to get into tube amps. And, you know, I, I obviously read the internet on all this type of stuff. And I came across a uh, Herb Reichhaus article about the line magnetic um, 518 
IA. And I was like, well, I'm never going to be able to get that, let alone in Dubai. Because one of the things about living in Dubai is that, you know, there are a couple of audio shops here, and we'll get into that a bit later. And they've really come up in the last few years. But there wasn't really thing, anything available. You could get, like, really high-end Macintosh. You could get, like, Focals speakers and, like, Sonus Faber. There wasn't anything kind of, like, low-mid, uh, low-end hi-fi, like, you know, entry level, higher range stuff. So I ordered everything off Amazon or I ordered them especially from overseas. You know, importing was quite a lot. And I saw this, I thought, okay, well, you know, the, the 845 518, uh, 518IA line magnetic is definitely on the list of stuff I'm, I want to buy but will never get. And then I saw it pop up on a classified site like a couple of months later and I, had, I just bought it. And I've had it ever since, I'm never gonna sell it. It's an incredible amp for the money. I got it for an absolute bargain. Can't remember how much, but it was definitely way less than what I should have paid for it. Um, you know, uh, I had that in the monitor audio speakers. Uh, the monitor audios weren't efficient, they were little bookshelf speakers. I really wanted to do something different, and that's what really got me into speaker building because I thought, okay, uh, you know, I've got a budget of maybe a few thousand dollars to build a speaker, what can I get? And I started designing a speaker and researching how to build speakers and working out all the maths and every time you think you figure it out you know um, there's another another issue and I thought okay well here's my conceptual perfect speaker which ended up being a, a three-way uh, floor standing speaker with a horn treble and horn mid and a, a big big like 15 inch um, direct radiator on the bottom and I was like, okay, that's great. It's going to cost me about $4,000 to make this thing, and I think it'll be spectacular. Um, obviously, never built a speaker before, so I don't even know if, it, if, if what, I, what it will sound like, you know, if it's going to sound good or not. So I ended up actually, this is exactly when Klipsch actually came to the Middle East through one of the, the retailers here, because Klipsch was never here before. And it was essentially a Cornwall. <laughs> so I'd inadvertently accidentally designed a Cornwall. Um, and I thought, okay, well, you know, uh, let's go check it out. I didn't quite like the Cornwall, but the Forte is obviously uh, pretty similar. Obviously, it's got the passive radiator on the back. So I was like, okay, I'm going to buy that and use it as like my reference speaker to see what a good speaker in this price range sounds like. And then maybe in the future, I will uh, build another speaker. So I got the Klipsch Fortes with the 22 watts per channel line magnetic. Uh, and my mind was blown. I mean, never heard anything like this before. Um, and that's when I was really kind of got, got into the whole, you know, that's when I started getting pretty serious. So, you know, my journey has kind of been more around trying to get the, the, the most out of the music. Um, you know, I, I really, I really don't like using music to listen to my system. I just want my music to sound as good as possible for as little as possible. And I mean, I've, I've ended up spending probably more than I should on everything. But, you know, it, it's definitely not, you know, as much as one could spend. And I've, I'm very, you know, um, very into like electronics and I, I mod a lot of, I mean, pretty much everything here, I'll go through it in a bit, is like, it's completely modified, um, you know, with capacitors or I've redesigned the crossovers like three or four times in the Klipsch's. It's got upgraded components. It's, you know, the speakers are braced and damped and um, I think it's V3 or so of the crossover and it sounds absolutely fantastic. I don't think I can get any, any more out of it. I don't even know what an original Klipsch 43 sounds like anymore, but this is great. You know, the, the, um, it draws as well as it can with the, with the drivers, really good impedance, a really flat, flatter impedance. Frequency is uh, as flat as I can get it anyway. Not that that really matters, but you know, you know, when certainly when I'm designing my own speakers, now it's you know you, the, you I'm trying to f you know get the fundamental physics in place, and I think you know a speaker will sound better if it has a even impedance draw, if the impedance phase there's less variation in the impedance phase as possible, and if the if the frequency curve is as flat as possible, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good speaker, but it's definitely going to um, sound better. Being an audiophile in Dubai now is a lot easier. There's a couple of shops here which um, I'll try and get some footage of and throw in, but you know, there's uh, there's one one here called Raw Music, which um, kind of know the guys a little bit. Uh, I was trading 
like speakers for records. A lot of my records come from here. He, this guy gets um, a lot of records from like Japan and he was, he was trading them like just on, on WhatsApp and uh, met him a couple of times and he started a store. He's, he's got a crazy distribution game. So, I mean, he's bringing in Goldnote, he's bringing in Elac, he's bringing in, uh, I think, MoFi as well. Like, I can't list all the brands because there's a lot of them, like uh, Meze headphones. He's got all the, like, the MoFi recordings. A lot of interesting stuff that's kind of like the, you know, entry level to, like, upper, mid, lower, high-end stuff. And then there's another place which has been here for, like, 50 years, I think, which is called Dubai Audio, which is the super high-end stuff. So... You know, obviously in Dubai, there's quite a lot of people with quite a lot of money. So, I mean, these are, you know, they, they, they've got Nagra. Um, they've got all the latest Nagra stuff. They've got MBL now. They've got Klipsch, actually. Um, they've got, uh, I think, Focal, Sonus Faber, Wilson. Um, like, all the crazy high-end stuff. And it's really nice because all these guys are super cool. So, you can just go to the shops and be like, yeah, I want to listen to this crazy Nagra and MBL system. And it's like, wow. Um, they also got Cord Electronics. A friend of mine here is also an audiophile. Is, <laughs> he got a Cord Electronics. I don't know if I get it right, like a Hugo TT2 and the Upscaler or the M Scaler. I'm not too sure what it's called. Um, quite a lot of money for that stuff, but I mean, it, uh, it really sounds good. So, yeah, anyway, let me, um, I guess, you know, walk you through walk you through what I've got here. Well, like I said, we've got the 518 IA Line Magnetic. Um, it's an absolutely amazing amp. I read uh, Herb Reichard's article about, uh, I think it's his kind of like long term, I see it in the back of his videos with Steve Guttenberg every now and again. It's, um, it's an 845 single-ended amplifier. His article basically said for the money, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's very, you know, my personal opinion is that it's um, uh, very holographic or as holographic as you can get with it. Uh, changing the tubes on it definitely made a lot of difference. It's very meaty, but also very like warm, uh, like very, very creamy. Um, you know, but there's enough detail, um, maybe a little bit too much in the bass. Um, and but the, there's a lot of like nice high sparkly bits. Mid range is suffering a bit uh, compared to some other stuff I've heard, but it's absolutely fantastic. I've I've put in uh, some signal path capacitors in there, so there's uh, a Jupiter beeswax high temperature caps in the signal path. I tried a couple of other ones, which I don't want to mention the names. I really didn't like them in the the last stage. Um, right, we're running in there now. Some I eventually found some. Mandorfs with the right voltage spec. So some, uh, I think they're Mandorf Supremes, kind of not really made anymore, found some old ones. And those are absolutely fantastic. Took a little bit of a while to settle in, um, but definitely, definitely loving it now. I think the next step to upgrade it is definitely getting some better 845 tubes in there. These are kind of mid-range Chinese treasure tubes, I think. Um, they sound fantastic, but you know the next step up now to hear a significant difference is like a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars a set So I think we'll skip that for a bit um, The Yusegi so this is I guess my latest acquisition uh, a few months ago um, It's probably a name many people haven't heard of before It's Yusegi or Yusegi bros Yusegi brothers the very potted history, and it's very scarce information to find because I don't speak or read Japanese. Uh, it's obviously Japanese amplifier, 100 volts. I'm running off a heavy, um, high wattage uh, step down transformer from 240 to 100. They are made and labeled sequentially. So this is the Yusegi Bros 30 Mark II, uh, made to work with the Yusegi Bros 31 preamp. Um, obviously, they just as they make something is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, these are kind of around the end of where um, uh, Yusegi San was alive, one of the brothers. Uh, after he passed away, I believe mid two thousands, the the company was bought and the factory was relocated somewhere else. Um, so they don't use the same naming convention anymore. But these are kind of towards the end. I um, originally had uh, my eyes on a Yusegi Bros 30, not the Mark II, which ran on 6L6s, not EL34s. Um, 
and the, I had I could get matching serial numbers, but I missed out on the auction due to some sort of bug or something. I missed out, but I got the Mark II, which I think is is probably better, although not as authentic. These are this is 16 watt push pull. What I really like about it is you can get a lot more um, power out of the EL34, but they decided to go down the route of you know 16 watts per channel. The line magnetics 22 watts per channel. 16 watts per channel sounds amazing. Sound stage on this compared to the line magnetic is slightly less, ever so slightly smaller, but everything is just more. There's more detail. Um, the mids are just so lush. I was really worried that there wouldn't be enough bass from this. There's no problem with bass. It's 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 detailed and structured, and uh, punchy but not like aggressive. The the detail in the bass is amazing. It's like that realistic timbre of like uh, strings on a cello, or you know the drumstick hitting a hi hat, or just the shimmer of a cymbal disappearing. I mean this this is all of that vo voices on this thing, female, male, any vocals. It's just, I mean, you can hear like the vocal cords vibrating. Uh, it's incredible. The way I've got it set up here is I've kind of made my own little switch boxes because I can't be bothered plugging in and taking out cables all the time. So I've used like pretty high-end switches, Elna switches, which are like $50, $60 a switch. Put them in a little box, use really good wire or copper, really good connectors. Um, I can select any input going into the preamp, which obviously goes into here. I can have the preamp going into the line magnetic. You can use the line mag. As like a quasi power amp. It's not really a true power amp. It doesn't bypass the preamp section. It just bypasses the volume switch, which is fine. Um, it sounds pretty good. And obviously, I can just go straight into the line magnetic itself. You know, so I kind of got like three different flavors. You know, I, I try to come up with a structure of how to listen to which one. Like, is it a type of music? Is it a type? It's it's really not. It's just a type of mood. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like. You know, I don't know. I want to. I just want a big full sound, and I just go straight into the line magnetic. You know, I put on the the preamp to the power amp, Usagi, and it's just like really nice and delicate and really lush. It just depends on my mood. I, I like. I'm like, oh, I just I listen to this today and turn it on, and it all sounds fantastic. I don't go like, oh, I should have listened to this song on this. It's not like I just. It all sounds good. I don't really care. It's just. It just sounds <laughs> to whatever I'm feeling at the time.